This is the latest phone from OnePlus, their 10T, and it's very different from what you expect from this brand nowadays, especially because of its price. So this is rocking the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, like a top tier flagship chip, and it costs $650. This is a better chip than what was in the 10 Pro for a lower price. Now, the thing about OnePlus is that over the years, the one complaint that most people have had about the brand has been price. As their phones got better, the price has gone up and up. But this phone, the 10T, is $250 cheaper than the 10 Pro. So like flagship SOC for mid-range price, or like upper mid-range price. But to pull this off, they had to make some sacrifices, but they've done it in a very OnePlus fashion. So the first thing is the screen. It's a nice screen, 120 Hertz AMOLED, but it's a flat screen. There's no curvature at all on the edges of it. So basically all of the Pro models from OnePlus have had this uh, curvature to them and I mean, personally, I've always liked flat screens. It's better for daily use for me, and I like playing games on flat screens. But having a curvature to a screen just bumps up the cost of it. They have to use a particular type of flexible OLED panel. This doesn't, and it's just a really nice screen for a little less money. It does have an adaptive refresh rate, so it'll scale between 60 to 120 hertz, depending on what you're doing, and it'll preserve battery life by going down to a lower refresh rate, but it's not as good as like the 10 Pro. This has an LTPO panel. It can go down to like one hertz for extreme energy efficiency, but it is still a very high quality panel. Another area that they cut some corners is with the cameras. So this camera setup looks very similar in terms of aesthetic layout and design to the 10 Pro, but man, it is completely different. So for one, it's not Hasselblad branded. Whatever kind of color science or partnership they had going on with that camera company is not present with the 10T. So the main sensor is a 50 megapixel IMX 766. It's a pretty decent sensor. The ultra wide though is really weak. This is an eight megapixel sensor from OmniVision and there's no zoom lens. So any kind of punching in you're doing in photos is all done digitally, but then there's also the return of the two megapixel macro lens. So the main shooter isn't bad at all. A lot of phones in the six to $800 price range use it. It exposes consistently, but any kind of faster movement can be difficult to shoot. It is pretty good in low light if you can hold your shot steady. But again, any kind of movement or fast shots aren't great with that sensor. But the ultra wide, this thing is rough. So the OnePlus 10 Pro, this didn't have the best ultra wide, but it was pretty good. The OnePlus 10T, it's so much worse. It's not sharp, the colors are off, the dynamic range on it isn't great. It's just a very mediocre lens. But this type of mid-range camera system was the kind of stuff we used to see with OnePlus when they were in their most beloved phase. So like the OnePlus 3 to the OnePlus 6, they had these like weaker camera systems, awesome SOC, good pricing, flat screens, and it's kind of like it, it's all coming back in the form of this 10T, and I like to see it. Now the texture on this back panel isn't like the grippy sandstone material of the past. They call this new material Moonstone Black and it's a much smoother texture. It doesn't give much grip, but it does look cool and has this sparkle in certain lighting. Okay, let's talk about battery systems. So this new device does not have wireless charging. If you think about the older OnePlus devices, one through the seven Pro, they also didn't have wireless charging and the pricing was a little bit better back then. This seemingly in a, and an effort to reduce the pricing on this device. They've stripped it out, but you do get even faster Super VOOC charging. So this can go up to 150 watts in certain regions. I think like Europe and India can hit 150 watts. In North America, 125 watts. It is very fast, but you do need really good conditions to pull it off. So right now, I don't have air conditioning in the studio. It's busted, it's hot. And when I was charging this, it was taking almost 30 minutes to fully charge the device when it's supposed to take around 20 in ideal conditions. So depending on, I guess, the environments that you're doing this in, the usefulness of that Super VOOC charging is gonna vary, but the battery charges extremely fast when the battery is nearly empty. Now the battery size is 4,800 milliamp hours. It's not as big as the one on the 10 Pro, but it still has excellent battery life. I was getting like eight to nine hours of screen on time consistently, that's with heavy use. So great battery system very fast charging battery system, it's just no wireless. Now, another thing that they've stripped from the 10T is the alert slider. So on basically every OnePlus phone, there is a alert slider. You can slide it up and down to adjust whether or not you want your phone to be ringing or vibrating or doing nothing at all. And it's gone on the 10T. Now for me, this slider practically defined the OnePlus brand. Like this is just something that I appreciate. I use it very regularly and it's, really strange and disappointing to see it being removed. Now, the official stance from OnePlus is that they removed it because they're trying to save a little bit of space. I think it's like 30 square millimeters of footprint 
to implement the SuperVoog charging and to implement a slightly bigger battery and for some antenna tweaks for better gaming performance. But if you're in a meeting or in a movie theater and you just want to reach into your pocket, just flick it, like you know that your phone is silent. You just know because you've used it a thousand times. But now you have to pull it out of your phone, hit the screen, and adjust it. Like it's just a lot more steps, more friction to be able to get it done. And I don't think they should have removed it. Now, performance on the 10T is quite good. It's kind of what you would expect for a device with a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 being cooled properly. Uh, so it performs at a high level until it gets too hot and then it dips down over time. But this time, there is an interesting case that is available on this device. So it's got a material called Glacier Mat. It's this hydrogel material. And the way that I understand it is that this, okay, so the back or like the, the part of the case that's touching the device, it's got this, what feels to be some kind of plastic or vinyl coating, okay? That's not the special material. The interesting material is on the flip side of it, so on the very back of the case. This material is this modified hydrogel that works through evaporation. So it's a little bit wet, and as the device heats up through the act of evaporation, it helps to cool off the device. So you'll have it on the back of the phone, and you're playing a game or doing something that's uh, intensive somehow, it'll heat up and the water will evaporate off and cool the device ever so slightly. And then it's regenerative in the sense that when you are done playing your game and you're in an environment that has some moisture in the air, which is basically everywhere, it'll reabsorb that water back into this hydrogel material on the back of the case. And I tested it. Now, it works somewhat, like I was seeing consistent one to maybe 1.5 degrees lower temperatures when I had this case, like when I'm measuring the SOC temperature, but it doesn't amount to anything significant. Like the frame rates aren't any better. Like it's not like the device goes up by any significant margin because of that one degree change in temperature. So it's cool, but I don't know how useful something like this is. I just think it's neat that's available, which is why I'm even mentioning it, but it is not something that I'd seen before. I do think that Oppo has this tech as well, but I just never seen it before. That's all. Uh, so that is the Glacier Mat case. But overall, we have a device this year that is, it's significantly cheaper, right? This is without a doubt, way cheaper than we'd expect from a OnePlus phone in 2022, especially with that high-end SOC. Now they've done some stuff that I like, like I like the flat screen and I like the removal of the Hasselblad branding because all that stuff costs money, but I don't like the reduction in camera hardware, at least not to the degree that it's been reduced by, and also the removal of the alert slider. I feel like that was such a big part of what made these phones OnePlus phones. But overall, they've made something that's very akin to like the old school OnePlus vibe. It really is. But when you look at it and you've seen this video, is this what we wanted from OnePlus? <laughs> <laughs>